Anyone who's purchased a mainstream processor in the last decade or so from either AMD or Intel will know they bundle a basic cooling solution with their processors. I say basic cooler because they're low cost products and as such, feature simplistic designs. To be fair, both companies are limited in what they can offer due to compatibility requirements. Large coolers won't suit all systems and the heavier a cooler, the more complex the mounting hardware needs to be. For most users, the standard box cooler does a good enough job. They aren't outrageously loud and they have proven to be very reliable. Enthusiasts on the other hand leave the box cooler where it belongs, in the box. Given the chance they would probably throw it in the trash, but the cooler is often required for warranty purposes. Anyway, realising that enthusiasts aren't going to use the stock cooler, Intel has omitted it completely from their K processor packages, while AMD felt it unnecessary to include their stock cooler with the silicon melting beast that is the FX9590. Currently, AMD equips its FX series processors, excluding the FX9590, with a rather small air cooler known internally as the AMD D3. The D3 heatsink is made of aluminium and features four copper heat pipes. On top sits a 70mm fan which can and will make itself well known under load. The modest box cooler can dissipate up to 125 watts of heat, though in order to do so, it does make an uncomfortable Hovercraft-esque 51 decibels. Given processors such as the FX8370 boast a thermal design power rating of 125 watts, they have no trouble pushing the D3 to its limits. For this reason, the bulk of AMD's FX customers look to alternative solutions and there's a wealth of options out there. Spending an additional $50 or so on a high performance air cooler isn't too much of a stretch when you're already dropping $240 on an FX9590. However, most of AMD's fans invest in the cheaper, more cost effective FX processors such as the $140-8320, which can be overclocked by at least 1000 MHz. There are $30-$40 to $40 options that enable pretty decent overclocks on the FX8320, though still, this increases the total cost by 20-30% to 30%, and that puts consumers within striking range of a Haswell Core i5. Some news that came out of AMD recently suggested that they're looking to solve this issue, at least to some degree anyway. The word is AMD plans to provide better quality coolers with their processors going forward, and today on hand we have evidence of just this. Called the Wraith, which I have to say is a fair bit cooler than D3, this new thermal solution can be used on existing and future AMD processors. Like the D3, the Wraith is only rated for 125 watts of heat, but it does have some notable upgrades. Firstly, the aluminium heatsink is much larger, and AMD tells us the Wraith features 24% more surface area in which to dissipate heat. Again, there are four copper heat pipes, but this time they're aided by a larger 80mm fan, which provides up to 34% more airflow, while generating less than one tenth the noise. AMD claims that the 80mm fan moves 41.6 CFM of air with a maximum noise level of just 39 decibels. It's important to note that while this is a huge improvement over the previous model, it's still quite a bit louder than premium coolers from the likes of Noctua or Thermalright, for example. The Wraith isn't being pushed as an out-of-the-box overclocking solution by AMD, and rather, they're hoping to provide a cooler that can keep their FX series and future processors at an acceptable temperature without making your ears bleed. Evidently, the plan isn't just to offer a quieter box cooler, but also something that's a little more visually appealing. Placed on top of the Wraith is a fan shroud complete with LED lighting. Etched into the shroud are the letters AMD with the company logo, which appear only when the system is switched on. When the system isn't running, you can't see the logo at all. The Wraith will begin shipping with the FX8370 and then presumably with all FX processors, while it could also end up getting paired with higher end APU, which is really exciting. So without wasting any more time, let's clip it onto the AM3 Plus socket and run a few tests. It might seem silly to compare the Wraith with an all-in-one liquid cooler, but there's a good reason why we've done this. It's here to help put the performance gains provided by the Wraith over the D3 into perspective. The Intel RTS 2011 LC, which was developed by Ace Tech, was intended for use with Sandy Bridge E processors such as the Core i7-3970X. If we look at the idle temperatures, the Wraith is just 4 degrees cooler than the D3. Which might not seem like much of an improvement, however, the 32 degree idle temperature means the Wraith allowed the FX8370 to run just a single degree warmer than a closed loop liquid cooler. So relatively, the Wraith does extremely well here. Under load, using the A64 system stability test, the old D3 cooler allowed the FX8370 to reach a toasty hot 75 degrees. 
This terribly high temperature of the D3 isn't even the worst part. The noise the cooler generates in an effort to keep the processor operational is almost unbearable. The Wraith wasn't only much quieter, but it kept the processor below 60 degrees right throughout the 20 minute stress test. The low temp of 59 degrees meant the Wraith was 21% cooler than the D3, and incredibly just 13% warmer than the liquid cooler. The Wraith also compared well to the Cooler Master Hyper 212X, a cooler which we've used in the past to achieve impressive overclocks on the FX processors. Speaking of which, I pushed the FX 8370 to 4.7 GHz using 1.5 volts, and the load temperature never exceeded 72 degrees, with the Wraith taking care of business. Not a bad result, and still cooler than the D3 at stock settings. Before wrapping up the testing portion of my video, here are a few noise comparisons of the D3 and Wraith coolers. The Wraith is certainly a much needed upgrade to the AMD package. This new cooler should mean budget shoppers can pick up one of AMD's inexpensive 8 core FX processors and get to overclocking without any additional expenses. Saving $20 to $30 on the CPU cooler might not seem like a big deal, but it does go a long way in improving the overall value of AMD's processors. Of course, you aren't going to be pulling off any extreme overclocks with the Wraith, and our 4.7 GHz overclock does seem as though it's right on the limit. That said, being able to push an FX processor comfortably to around 4.4 to 4.6 GHz using the box cooler is something that was previously unthinkable. Now I'm probably getting a bit ahead of myself with all this overclocking talk as AMD never actually mentioned overclocking at all when it came to the new Wraith cooler. The intention was to deliver a new box cooler that was better equipped for the task. So in that sense, mission accomplished AMD, two thumbs up. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox Release Day review. I'm your host Matt and I'd love to hear what you think of the Wraith in the comments or on our forum at hardwareunbox.com. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.